Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. This week we are reviewing a compact and cost-effective kit from Refuge Medical. This is the Dust Kit. I'm a fan of Refuge Medical. I've done a number of reviews on their kits and this one is no different. So today we're gonna go through this thing piece by piece and I'll tell you what I think. First and foremost, I claimed that this was cost effective and I stand behind that. I added up all the contents in here and if you bought everything on its own, it would come out to be about $105 to $110. Obviously that's kind of a estimation because prices fluctuate and where I found things might not be where they source things from, but it's a rough estimate on buying these things individually. Now, if you buy this kit from Refuge Medical with exactly what's in it, it'll cost you about $120. So that's about a $10 difference. And that uh, cost that I came up with for everything on its own doesn't take into account the packaging uh, of this kit. So honestly, I think that's pretty good. That is not an extreme markup by any sense of the word. I will also say though, if you are a uh, first responder or work in the medical field at all, you can go into North American's uh, Rescue's website and you can um, put in a code that discounts everything pretty well. And I'm guessing you could build the kit for a little bit less if you have the ability to do that. But for just a normal person that just wants this for you know their desk at work, this is a great option. Now, one thing we talk about a lot on this channel is going to be um, everyday carry of medical items. And a lot of people don't wanna carry things on them. So a solution that might work a little bit better for those people is stashing kits in their everyday life. So if you have, you know, one at home, one in your car, one in your desk, you know, maybe one on your bike, you're covering a lot of different areas where there are times where you're not going to have a kit, but for the most part, you're gonna have stuff close by. And I think that's really important. And that's definitely a viable option for medical preparedness. All right, so we are going to open up this kit and go through piece by piece. Obviously it is vacuum sealed on the front. You have um, everything that is in the kit. Uh, so you can kind of see what you're getting as you open it. This thing is decently sized, but it will fit in a lot of different areas. So right up here, we've got two pull tabs, and I think those are the only two on the kit. I'm gonna open it just like this. Now, uh, one problem with vacuum sealed kits is that there's no organization. So if you buy this kit and you're like trying to get one item in here, everything's gonna come out. Uh, and that could be a problem for you. The other thing you can do with these is you could buy this as a refill kit and put it in a nylon bag of your choosing if you don't wanna use the organization that's provided. So here, we're going to take this and we're just gonna dump everything out on the table into a mess. Throw that bag off the side. Now, uh, here we've got an instruction manual that's inside the kit and it's got a QR code for detailed instructions and then it kinda teaches you how to use the pressure bandage, uh, the tourniquet, as well as um, a chest seal. I think this thing's great and I like the QR code, but like I said with one of their other kits, I wish this QR code was on the outside of the kit so you could access it and actually learn how to use these things before opening it uh, in that regard. Now, their intention might be to take it out of the case, but honestly, if it's vacuum sealed, I wanna keep it in there if possible, just because it protects it uh, from the ele elements. Although, keep in mind, having something in a case is going to make it a lot harder to access when time is of the essence. All right, so let's start going through this piece by piece. We'll start with kind of the big ticket items, like the major life-saving items in here. We have a cat tourniquet. Now, uh, I would like this to be packaged without the packaging on. I get why they do this. Like, I'm sure there's liability taking out of it, uh, taking it out of the case before they ship it. But this is just one more wrapper you're going to get into. That being said, it's no difference than like this. This is in a wrapper uh, when you open it. And it's not like we're gonna take this out of the casing before we have to use it. So with this, if you are going to take everything out of the kit, I would recommend just taking off the plastic first. It's not a huge deal, but it's gonna make access a little bit easier. And then this is uh, an instruction paper there. So cat tourniquets, like them. I like that it's orange. That makes a lot of sense for the civilian environment. Uh, we don't really need black blending in tourniquets most of the time. All right, next up, we've got two things of packing gauze. So this is not a hemostatic kit. I believe there is a way to buy hemostatic agents with this kit if you want. Um, however, these are going to work almost just as well for wound packing. Um, these are by the Ford brand. Honestly, brand of these, I, I've never noticed a huge difference in them and I think they work just fine. So we're gonna pull that out. It's a pretty solid brick if you're not used to working with them, but it is relatively easy to find the end there. 
we would just take this, ball it up, and this is used for wound packing at the junctional site, so base of the neck, armpits, and uh, groin, where the wound is not amenable to tourniquets. Additionally, if you've already applied you know, a tourniquet and you've got another wound you need to uh, pack on the extremity, you can pack wounds on the extremity. That is kind of your first line before going to an improvised tourniquet, um, which really aren't recommended in most situations. All right, so we've got the packing gauze here and it comes with two of them. So that's kind of nice. You can also use them for like pressure bandages, things like that. Works really well. All right, so next up, we've got a NAR 4-inch um, ETD. This is just a trauma dressing. So really simple here. We've got the red lines. We can open it at either end. So it opens there, it opens there. Either way, works out well. And I like that they're marked with red because it's just easy to open. There's nothing super special about these bandages. All we do is we take this open and then this goes towards the wound. You wrap it really, really tight. And then this at the end, if I can get to it, has a clasp to help seal it. It also has Velcro, so you don't really need to like tape this down or anything like that. This is for securing your wound pack or wrapping wounds that don't necessarily need a tourniquet, but you do need to stop the bleeding, especially head wounds. You bleed like a stuck pig, but you don't obviously put a tourniquet around somebody's neck. So these work pretty well. All right, next up in this list, kind of going down the what's gonna save a life first. Um, in here, we should have a SWAT T. So right here, this is a stretch, wrap, and tuck tourniquet. Um, and this is packaged by oh, Safeguard Medical. Yeah, so um, these tourniquets are not uh, Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care approved, but they are kind of a good secondary option in my experience, and they can be used on really uh, canines are a big one. This is what canine uh, uh, TECC recommends. Um, they're also good for kids and they can be used as an improvised uh, uh, trauma dressing as well if you just need a pressure dressing of some kind. So a bunch of different ways to open it here. Open this guy and this is gonna slide out. Now it's rubber, so it sticks a little bit there. And essentially what you do is you start wrapping this around somebody's arm and then you want to turn these squares into those squares. And that's how you know you have enough pressure if you wanna make it a tourniquet or uh, you can just wrap it as a pressure dressing either way. These are really bad for self-application. Um, they just slip all over the place, really hard to do. And honestly, on somebody else, they're also uh, have a little bit of a learning curve to them. So take that into account. These are relatively cheap, although I think their prices are way more than they're worth now with you know everything we're facing in the economy. Uh, so I think they're going for like $17 now. They used to be like 11 um, which kind of sucks. They've gone up that much, but these are a good tool. Just know its limitations before you use them. And of course this kit comes with an actual like recommended tourniquet. So, you know, this is just a backup. All right, next up, we have a product that I have actually never uh, seen before. This is the Esmark bandage and it's very similar to the SWAT T. Um, it's an elastic bandage. They say it's not a tourniquet, so don't use it as one. But they essentially say this it can be used to reinforce a pressure bandage. It can be used um, to create a tighter seal around a wound or to wrap in wound packing. It's just an elastic bandage that works very similar. Now on the last wrap of these, you can just pull up an end and tuck it in and that's gonna secure it. You don't necessarily need tape to secure these. So this one, I don't know if like I was building the kit, I would put this in there, but it is an addition and this is more than a minimalist kit. We're not just trying to go for the bare minimum. So this could be very useful to you. All right, next up in the list, we have a survival blanket. Survival blankets are huge. Uh, hyperthermia hyperthermia uh, kills and trauma. So it's really great to uh, have these things at your disposal. Just know that these blankets are not going to insulate on their own. They reflect the patient's heat back towards them. Um, but you should be insulating them with jackets, other things, keeping the heat really, really uh, high in the room. When we fly trauma patients in the helicopter, it can be a 90 degree day out and we're going to blast the heat because people uh, start taking on the temperature of their environment, which is called poikleothermia. Um, so they, somebody can get hypothermia, hypothermic even on a 90 degree day. So we really wanna keep them warm. Huge thing that it's in there, but obviously this is a compromise because it's really lightweight, not gonna insulate. All right, next up, we've got the Halo uh, Twin Pack Chest Seal. I usually go with North American Rescue, nothing wrong with Halo. These just have a little bit of a different um, uh, seal on them. So right here, we've got one that's unvented, and this one is vented right in the middle. So it says vent on it. This would go in the front if you've got like a gunshot wound, and then this one would go in the exit wound 
uh, there and they both just stick to the chest for a sucking chest wound. People say, hey, you can use them for like abdominal eviscerations. Yes, you can. Um, not their primary uh, use. Obviously, they're called a chest seal, so you'd assume they'd be used, you know, on the chest. Uh, all right, so coming down the line, we've got two abdominal pads. These are um, basically gauze that can be used for minor bandaging. So this would be great with like the Asmark bandage. You could, you know, put this on a minor wound and then wrap the Asmark bandage uh, with it. And they've got a radio opaque line so they can be seen if these were shoved into a wound, uh, they can see it on an x-ray in the hospital, two of those there. All right, coming down to the last couple items, we've got trauma shears here with an O2 wrench. Um, these are Refuge Medical brand uh, shears. These are good for probably like five to 10 uses and then they're gonna dull out, but hopefully you're not using these a ton if this is just like, a desk uh, kit that you're just using for, for minor stuff. And then we've got some flat folded duct tape. Um, so it's a cool form factor, but this is one of those things that was hard to price when I was looking at each individual item because you could get the same thing by just taking a roll of duct tape and wrapping it around a credit card. Um, but it's cool that's in this form factor. It's just really compact. All right, last couple items. We've got some nitrile gloves. Once again, these are branded as Refuge Medical, but there's in my opinion, nothing special with them. They're kind of the standard thickness uh, there. They're not a uh, super long sleeve or anything. And I believe these come in the large size. So, you know, if you've got huge hands or really small hands, you're kind of screwed. You might want to carry your own gloves and just tape them to the outside uh, of the kit. And lastly, we have a thing of medical tape. More here than you're going to use in this kit probably, but this stuff's really cheap and uh, I'd highly recommend it. So let's see, here we go. There was facing. Uh, so I use this for all the time uh, in my job um, for like anything you're doing here. This is great for, you know, securing a bandage, um, repairing a tool, uh, you name it, tons of uses for tape in a medical kit. So all in all, I think this is a great kit and it doesn't mark itself up in price very much. So, you know, if you're looking at kind of a one-stop shop for buying, you could save a couple bucks doing it yourself, but honestly, it's only a couple bucks when we're already talking over $100 and this comes pre-packaged for you. You can do what you want. So that's the whole kit. Honestly, I think this is a pretty cost-effective option. Obviously, you can always save a couple bucks by buying stuff yourself, but if you want to save yourself time, heartache, uh, and get everything that's in this kit at one place and get it sealed in a kind of a convenient form factor, you know, I'd definitely take a look at it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.